Hey everyone, welcome into the third episode of the Huddle Hippos Coaches Show. My name is Michael Rose with Bright Media. Please be joined by our producer Trey Grubb and of course head coach Will Compton of the Huddle Hippos. And we have a very special guest who we will get to in just a little bit, so appreciate you coming in to coach to hang out with us tonight. Again, episode three underway. Uh, the Hippos as we stand right now are three and three. Uh, three wins at home, three road losses. Um, Everything in, in the past, we're looking forward to uh, taking on Stony Point coming up on Friday, but uh, a very special week that we're going to get to in a little bit, but since it's the coaches show and we have a coach joining us as opposed to the athletes that have come in the past, I thought it'd be kind of fun, I don't know, for our fans, maybe not for you so much, but for our fans, <laughs> just to give a perspective, um, we're wearing headsets, uh, Trey and I wear headsets in the booth when we do a broadcast, and here we are doing it again, and uh, Coach mentioned uh, he wears a headset. Uh, enough as it is, but uh, um, all the coaches up in the press box sitting next to us, uh, and uh, along with all the coaches on the sidelines, just to, if you would, you don't have to give away any trade secrets, but talk about a little bit about the communication that goes on between you on the headset and upstairs to downstairs, maybe a little bit about adjustments made, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the way we have kind of have it set up uh, is we have an offensive side and a defensive side. Uh, on the offensive side, you have Coach Leonard, uh, you have Coach Brandt, uh, Coach Stringer, because uh, Coach Stringer's doing all of our signaling for us. Um, there, uh, Coach Hargrove has one as well. Uh, they're going to be on the, you know, they're going to be hearing the play call uh, from Coach Leonard uh, on that aspect of it. Uh, Coach Hargrove has a dual switch uh, most time because he does. He's also our special teams guy, and so he's going to be able to get on the offense and the defensive side. Uh, okay. So that way we can figure out uh, who needs to uh, get out there for the special teams on punt and stuff like that. Uh, and then up in the box they have Coach Harrison and uh, Coach Albert. Uh, Coach Harrison is going to be watching the fronts uh, to see kind of like what the defensive line is doing, you know, if they're playing, they're slanting to the field, if they're slanting to the boundary. Uh, Coach Albert will be watching the secondary to see kind of how they line up to uh, different formations uh, from series to series and uh, communicating that down, down in distance uh, so that Coach can, uh, you know, know kind of what he needs to call in, the, in those certain situations. Uh, I'm able to listen to, to both sides of the ball. Uh, over on the defensive side, uh, down on the field, we have myself, uh, Coach uh, Coach Mullins, Coach Pasella, uh, Coach Lampy, uh, down there for the uh, the on the field adjustments uh, and signals and things like that. Uh, Coach Gaylor uh, and Coach. Uh, Oh, I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, Jennings <laughs> uh, <laughs> up in the box, which Coach uh, Coach Lampy's watching. Uh, you know, uh, our Coach uh, Gaylor's watching. Basically, he's calling our defense. Uh, okay. he, he calls our he calls our fronts, uh, fronts and blitzes, uh, and then I match our back end, uh, the secondary stuff to match with uh, what what play call he calls in there for uh, for a stunt and a blitz. Uh, you know, and then, you know, we go throughout the week, we kind of know, and this is, you know, for, for those that don't know, what, what me and Coach Gaylor are doing right now, uh, with the help of Coach Mullins as well, is, you know, it's kind of unique, you know, uh, normally you'd have one guy that kind of calls everything, you know, it takes a, it takes a lot of trust, takes a lot of, uh, getting to, you know, uh, kind of a feel for you know knowing kind of what you're going to call and what matches uh, this covers this covers this covers you know to you know he knows that he wants to send uh, a jam blitz uh, from here well I know if he sends a jam then I have to match the coverage that goes with this if not then you get what happens at Judson and we spin the coverage the wrong way and we leave a back open on the back side you know those type of things and that's you know that was some some of our learning curve again mm -hmm. this is uh, for me this is my first time really being over on the defensive side uh, you know, on the on the big capacity like this, uh, I've studied it and everything else. But now being over there uh, as much as I am, uh, it's been a, it's been a big learning curve for me. Uh, you know, Coach Gaylor and Coach Mullins have been you know a tremendous help for me, uh, just understanding. And then now, you know, I'm able to see it from a from a different light. But we get constant communication. Uh, then we have our analytics uh, going on. Uh, sure. We yeah. have two different types of analytics. So we have our we have our offensive analytics uh, down on the sidelines. Which uh, that's telling us, you know, when we're going to punt, when we're going to continue to go for it. Uh, which I think we've punted ten times this year. Uh, it's a lot more than I even wanted to, but uh, <laughs> you know, everything's down distance based. Sure. You know, and uh, you know that's what that's what we're looking at. So I have a guy. Uh, if you ever look down on the sidelines, there's a there's a guy that follows me around everywhere that I'm going. He's following me around. He's got a book, uh, and so on that book, it's talking about uh, like kind of 
where the time is in the game and what the score uh, differential is in the game. And so off of that, he looks at where we're at on the field, and it may say, all right, you have to get within three yards. If you get within three yards on fourth down, you're going for it. Okay. And so uh, if you get within seven yards, you get within 11 yards, you got to get to one yard. And so we know on first down whether or not – or what we have to get to on fourth down to go for it. Okay. And so I'm talking nice. to I'm talking to Leonard. Hey, you got to get to three. You got to get to two. You know, so that way he knows that you know some some play calls may not make sense where it's it's a third and ten and we're running the football mm-hmm. and you're thinking, man, why would you run the football on third and ten? You know, you got you you need to get a first down there. Well, I told Leonard all he has to do is get to five knowing that he's going to go for it on fourth and five. So all he has to do is call a five-yard play instead of a 10-yard play to now go for it on fourth and five and cut that distance in half. And that makes two, you know, easier play calls as compared to trying to call a, you know, a third and 10, don't get it. Now it's fourth and 10. Now we have to punt. Uh, oftentimes, as a color analyst, Trey's up there saying this is two down, you know, two down and third down kind of a situation. and Understanding how that goes. Um, with all the communication going on, it can get kind of frantic, I assume. <laughs> it can, you know, and that's, that's uh, you know, coaches learn, you know, as they're around. You know, our staff, for the most part, has been around each other for three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you, you kind of learn, you know, where to talk, when to talk, uh, right. you know, who can talk, who can't talk, uh, who's there to listen. Uh, <laughs> you know, and that's <laughs> – it's, uh, it's, it's not a Zoom call where you can click raise hand, right? No, <laughs> it's – you know, and it's – you know, and that, that's – you know, it's one of those things where, you know, on the headsets, you know, it, it's not personal. You right. know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, on the defensive side, there's a lot more talking than there is on the offensive side. Uh, it's, you know, the offensive side, Coach Leonard just wants to know down distance, you know, what hash is it on. Mm-hmm. And that, that's the only communication he wants, you know, as he's calling plays because if you're getting – you know, hey man, I think we could do this, and I think we could do this. As you're trying to think of like the play call that you want to get, that is terrible. <laughs> I mean, when yeah. you're when you're getting five people talking to you about, oh man, we should run inside zone, we should run Cougar, we should run Cougar Z post, and you're in your head, you're thinking like, I know what I want to do, but I have like you know have the voices in my head already, <laughs> and then now I got y'all's voices telling telling me what to run. Uh, that's when you know it really gets bogged down. Yeah. On the on the defensive side, uh, it's a little bit more chaotic now that I now that I've been over there and uh <laughs> and, and calling it uh <laughs> because you know because there's every there's a lot more talking you know oh there's a tight end there's this there's that and it's and it's all the little key parts but you know a lot of our stuff goes through it goes through checks you know if the tight end if they have a tight end we check to this if they have this if they're in empty it checks to this if they're in trips it checks to this and so you know one of the things that we do that that varies for us is that we run a lot of different coverages Mm -hmm. and so we we want to we have our coverage checks to different things if the back is strong if the back is weak if the back's in pistol if the back's here and so we're we're talking about all those different things and so that's where you know we got to know all those things and we got to know them fast and so sometimes I can't see it because Gaylor can see it from the box. All right, 82's in the huddle. 82's come from the sideline. All right, 8 came in, but he's in the slot. Okay, he's going to reload back into the box. And so we have to know all those things, and so we're talking out there to the kids and everything else. Wow. So those of you that are watching this, <laughs> make sure that you press the letter K, that's the pause, and then you can go back and and get, make sure you get all that written down. But um, as far as the chaos goes, we're – where does the voice of reason come in in those chaotic moments? And then from all y'all's conversations, how does it get to the field? I know you said the coaches are signaling it in, but if you're checking things, who gets that call and how quickly can that get in, get conveyed to the players? It, it gets in really fast, you know, and, you know, everything that we do on a Friday night's practiced. Yeah. You know, so from – That was my next question. Yeah, so, I mean, from, you know, just starting on the offensive side, you know, everything that, de- that is done, you know, on a Friday night, everything's signaled at practice. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when they're going they're going down the field in practice, they're looking over to Coach Stringer. Uh, they run a play, they look to Coach Stringer. Run a play, look to Coach Stringer. Run a play, look to Coach Stringer. And then we script out what plays we're going to run during practice. And sure. so Coach, Stringer, Coach Stringer's just reading, you know, through that. In a game, the only difference is that now Coach Leonard's talking to him. And sure. so, so now he's not actually having to read it. Or uh, in practice, Coach Stringer may have someone, you know, read him the thing. So he's hearing that, you know, all right, trips right, why yo-yo, uh, rocky, uh, rocky base. And so uh, one of those t- type of things. And so, you know, we have our it – it can get kind of verbiage-wise uh, mm-hmm. in there. But, you know, it, it's, uh, it's good. You know, as far as, you know, 
who makes the final call. You know, Coach Linder's going to make the final call about 90% of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's for a, you know, are we going to punt? Are we going to are we going to go for it and stuff like that? That's going to be me mm-hmm. uh, making the final call. But like I said, on 99% of those things, we know on first down. Ev- everybody on that offensive staff knows on first down what we have to get to on fourth down for us to go. Wow. That's so amazing. So there's no, there's not really a there's not really a question. I mean, it's not like a oh is this, is this a go down? Is this not a go? I mean, it's literally like hey three, and if it's not at three, if it's at six, we're not going. Hearing all that, hopefully that gives our listeners and fans and parents and everyone else more perspective on just how much y'all have to do, not just on the field with the players, but behind the scenes to get ready for all this. So it's it's uh, it's a lot, you know. And then you know, it's kind of taking that taking that to the defensive side. You know, we have Coach Gaylor making a making a call that that he wants to make down. You know, as far as the, if he wants a blitz or if he wants to run the the four man front or the three man front, he's he's calling that down to the field. It's getting signal that to the kids, and then I'm checking formation on the back end, and I'm either, uh, you know, the kids have already you know talked about it and made their coverage checks, or they're looking to the sidelines, and I'm making the coverage checks, and so, and it's just a simple signal, you know, here or there. And just to touch base on what you're doing. That's more in the moment, everything you just talked about. When you get to halftime, do you ever scrap it, forget it, let's do this instead? No. So w- when we go to halftime, uh, so we do we do film. We are allowed to, to have replay. Okay. And so uh, when it works, it's fantastic. Mm. Uh, Good old internet. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> kind of like in between series, in between <laughs> series, Coach Gaylor is able to, he's able to look at uh, the last series. You know, okay. uh, you know what happened here. You know, did they have a tight end? Did the did the H back come in and, and kill the backside defensive end uh, type things? And so then when we come in at halftime, we can go back and we can watch uh, any clip from the first half. Okay. And so you know, uh, you know, Coach Jennings brings down uh, his laptop that he's got right there. He brings down his laptop and we start pulling up the clips. All right, what play hurt us? All right, they ran they ran a split zone that hit us for 25 going down the middle of the field. It was middle of the second quarter. Uh, hit down the middle of the field. They were going that direction. Coach Jennings find that play. Did he kill all the way across or did he insert? And so Coach Jennings will go through and he'll, he'll find the zone play. He'll find that and he'll say, oh, yep. He yo-yoed in from the coming from the right to the left. He stopped in the middle. Okay, so now we need to know how we're going to fit that. All right. Again, letter K. Pause. <laughs> catch your breath. That's all right. That's amazing. Um, wow. I knew that you would have a plethora of things to share about that, so I'm glad I got to got to get you going on it. Um, and that's a kind of a nice segue. Um, talking about who you're talking to on the headsets to the person who didn't want to wear a headset. Uh, why don't you introduce our guest to us right now? So th- who we have here today is uh, we have Coach Brian Gaylor. Coach Brian Gaylor is our, our co-defensive coordinator, uh, also our head powerlifting coach. Uh, he's done a phenomenal job uh, with both of those. Uh, last year, previous two years, he was our special teams coordinator. Uh, did a, did a great job with that. Uh, you know, we had uh, Tim Hollenbeck, uh, who was our kicker two years ago, uh, who almost set the school record. Uh, you know, for a field goal, uh, kicked a 52-yarder uh, to win the ball game versus Judson. Uh, did set the punting record uh, that year, uh, even though he, I think he only punted like. 15 times, uh, I think. 18, I think it was 18 times uh, that year. And um, you know, in this past year, we had Gabe Sordo, which is uh, uh, Carlos's uh, older brother, sure, was, yeah. uh, was our kicker uh, last year. Uh, did a really good job for us. And then this year, uh, you know, with some with some late changes, uh, you know, bumped him and Coach Mullins together uh, to uh, co-defensive coordinator, and uh, it's been a, it's been a really good move for us. Excellent. Coach, thank you for joining us, kind of sitting here listening to all the things, a lot of repetition, but uh, um, one of the things that we really enjoyed and, and what Coach Compton talked about from the beginning is everything's so different and wondering what the defense would look like. So from your perspective with the change from the previous season to this season, all the things going on, talk about your defense and what you're really proud of and what you're really looking forward to seeing as we move forward. I, mean, I, th- I think the biggest thing that I'm proud of is just how much we fly around. Hmm. Uh, our, our in the past maybe we didn't have that heavy hitter but we, we have guys now that are going to come and hit you and we were very physical last week probably the most physical game I, I think we've had since I've been here in Hutto and that says a lot because other coaches then see that sure and, and that makes a difference because receivers don't run over the middle quite with their hands out and running backs all of a sudden look for that backside so hmm. 
you know, that's that's something that been very pleased. And, that, you know, the thing that I'm looking forward to is, is, is we keep going is just watching the growth of some of these young men. Uh, you know, as a coach, you you get middle of the season, you, you kind of start to get sad because you look over and these – these kids you've been around for years and you realize they're a senior and they're going to be moving on, but you see how much they're growing and, and what they're doing, you know, the cash tunnel plants that, mm -hmm. that are out there, uh, you know, a Jarvis Robinson, yes, you know, that was a junior on, on JV and, and coming in and playing and playing so hard, uh, and pick your mic up oh, and not, not trying to, <laughs> <laughs> you know, my hands. You know, I want you to finish that before I. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, right. The, that's it's just big. You you mm -hmm. get to see that. Yeah, and then you get the disappointment. You get the the Cameron Banks that has worked so hard. Yes, oh. and and then gets yeah. injured and and I mean your heart just goes out for that. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's hard for coaches. I I don't oh. think parents often realize how hard that is on us because we've seen that young man grow for three years. Sure. Absolutely. Well, some of the names that you just mentioned, Cash, and you mentioned um, Banks and everything else as far as what's going on. We got a chance to interview Briggs last week and uh, just talk with him and uh, just talk with Carlos a few minutes ago before we started the show. And um, every level, every level from the backside, you weren't sure about how the secondary is going to look this season, but every level from back to front, front to back, in the middle, everywhere else, stepping up making some really big plays and working together as a cohesive unit what's that like for you to coach and to see and and the products on the field every every play you know you see the intelligence of of some of the players and where they've grown from sure. one year to the next uh you know cashton out there and making sure how we're getting lined up and then you get brain daniel making sure you know mm, the defensive yes. line is getting where they're supposed to and then I'll be honest. I, I the secondary now talks more than they ever talked in the entire time that I was here, and you can even hear it over the headsets. I mean, oh, wow. that's 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 a big difference because that eliminates that confusion. Amazing. It's all coaching, you know. I just want to say, you know, <laughs> Absolutely. Coach Gaylor used to be the secondary coach, and so you know, we, once we once we got that change, and you know, <laughs> we really got it. Uh, we really got it taken care of. <laughs> And we have the defensive line that's mute now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's uh, the defensive line. You know, Jarvis and, and Sammy, and you know, just the the big plays up front. You don't really you don't really get a chance to to hear or talk about defensive linemen because the linebackers and the secondary, you know, they're setting everybody up to make the play. But that's a a pretty good problem to have. If you know, problem is a loose word right there, but having your, Sammy, your, having your Jarvis, scheme changes. Yeah. You know, and and some schemes you're you're a gap eater, and mm -hmm. so you're you're not involved. Your right. your job is to eat that gap and and stay there. But in other schemes, you know, you you get to knife and and go, and then you get to see those defensive players and that you know defensive linemen coming through. And yeah, Sammy, Sammy as a sophomore is really good. Yeah, and that's that's the next point too is just just the youth everyone's kind of stepping up and, and finding their niche and being where they need to be and filling in for injury or stepping up in a situation or all of a sudden there they are again i mean how many more in interceptions do you think cashin's gonna have how many more uh, big plays do you think briggs will have it's just all those things that each and every week we're we're having a lot of fun we you know as, a, as broadcasters, we have to pay more attention to offense, you know, as far as what's going on in the Trust field. Trust me, we know. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, this is kind of how we're wired. But, man, when the defense shines like it's doing, we, you can't help but, but point it out and, and focus on it more. So, we, I, as a broadcaster, appreciate being able to talk about both sides of the ball so much. No, and I will work on talking about the other side much more <laughs> now that I've been called y on it. Years so. ago, I was an offensive coordinator. Okay. And... It's very different on that side of the ball. Sure. And, and it's true what he said. It, your headsets are real quiet, mm -hmm. you know, other than maybe somebody saying, you know, hey, number four is here, that kind of thing. But on the defensive side, it is. It's There's a lot of chaos that goes on. Mm hmm it's controlled chaos, but it's chaos. And then they they get mad at me because I'll flip my like I'll flip my microphone up, and they're like, "Man, coach, you didn't tell them the coverage call." And they're like, "Yeah, okay, no, I can put it back down." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and you know, there's the thing you 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 get a coach that moves over, you know, an offensive guy, and he doesn't realize that 
you know, your DC's up upstairs, which well, that's where I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to hear it all the way through. You know, you want to hear it all the way through, but if there's no one back there, if his mic's up, it doesn't pick up the kids. Oh, if sure. his mic's down, it picks him up, and then it picks up the kids. So you hear the coverage call, and you hear it go all the way across. And that's uh, It's comforting for a defensive coordinator to sure. know, hey, the kids know where they're supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I forget about that sometimes. <laughs> but, you know. Hey, we're all learning, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they like me for the, to leave my mic down. They just, they just want to hear me talk to the referees. That's, <laughs> that's all they want ever is to just hear me talk to referees. And when you get these former offensive coaches, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's fun to have them over there. Yeah, definitely former. 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 <laughs> he, he's claim, he's sticking to this whole former <laughs> offensive coach. He said, "I can't go back." I was just gonna say, it sounds like you are stuck. No. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. Yeah, yeah, right. It's the dark side. <laughs> That's what we are. I'll go call the freshman or something. <laughs> as far as um, uh, defense defense goes, and and what's been happening, um, and having new players stepping into different positions what are you most proud of i i don't know proud of but proud of moving forward what what are you looking forward to what is what is something that uh we i want you to give away trade secrets or schemes or anything but as far as what these athletes have accomplished what are you looking forward to and what are you proud I mean, of to see next just to be honest it's i look at the defensive line we graduated everybody okay mm -hmm. everybody that played any meaningful minute minute was gone and so we had nothing but unknowns. Sure. Wow. And we're small. <laughs> we are not. We don't ever show up and look over across and go, "Man, we're a lot bigger than them." Mm -hmm. But the toughness of these of these young men and what you ask them to do week to week. I mean, that's because we we knew Braden Daniels. We knew Cashton. Sure. You know, even though Cashton was going to a new position, you you've got some known quantities. You had some known quantities. In the secondary with Sordo and the right. Medeiros brothers coming up, uh, but on the D line, they they're virtually all unknown. Yeah, they're actually, you know, I was, as you said that, I was thinking about it. Braden Daniel is the only one that is actually playing the position that he played in the last game last year. Wow. Oh yeah, that is. <laughs> wow. So Sordo broke his arm. Yeah. Uh, the Medeiros brothers were both on JV. Sure. Uh, Briggs was a safety. Uh, that moved down. Cashton is a safety that moved down. Uh, all the defensive line is new. Uh, Stanfield was a was a special teams guy. Was a role player for us. That, that's really stepped up and had a had a great year so far. So Braden Daniel was the only one uh, starting in his position that was on the field last year. I think that's where I keep. I'm, I'm a dad, right? My my two sons are in college and in the army now, and they played saxophone in their theater. So this is my opportunity when I broadcast to to have kids playing football. So that's why I keep asking what you're most proud of. When you when you see these players coming from different places and, and moving up as they're doing, being sophomores for heck's sake. I mean, that's kind of where I'm coming from as far as that what are you proud of kind of thing. And I really love hearing the dad come out of both of you and talking about these players developing and being uh, shining, I guess is the right word for that. Um, as, as you look forward to what what's next for these these athletes what is it that uh you hope for from them as a team defensively i mean if we keep improving i i, I tell the kids all the time you can't be great until you're good sure and so you have to be good and then the great plays come out and i think we saw it you know last week that we, we had so much good we had a few great plays and just progressing mm. in that and getting better and better and better and and growing as young men. I mean, that's, right. it, you know, it, it's a maturity thing. When you're a sophomore and you're on varsity, it's hard. Mm -hmm. the, it, you know, it, there's a different language that's yeah. spoken. Right. Uh, there's a different way to do things. There's a time to be quiet. And, and sophomores can struggle with that. But – you know, by this time of the year, you see them growing, and you see them growing through that, and that's that's very proud. You know, you you, you see them. Okay, you're you're becoming a young man now sure. instead of you know a teenager. You're a young man. Right. Excellent. Anything else we should ask, Coach? That I didn't think of. No, I think that was good. Appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. 
We're going to segue into what's coming up this week. It is Pink Out Week, Coach Compton. And you uh, mentioned that uh, there's uh, someone that you get to uh, get to honor and uh, some other things going on. So why don't you share a little bit about what Pink Out Week is all about for Huddle. Yeah, so Pink Out Week uh, is big for Huddle. You know, we have uh, Jenna Jones, who is, uh, you know, part of the Huddle faculty. Uh, that's the, the main focus uh, for Huddle, and that's where a lot of the donations go back to. They do a scholarship fund. Uh, and then uh, Rosalind Higgins is uh, is our special guest. Uh, she's part of our transportation department. Uh, love her to death. She's the one that, that helps us get our bus assignments and mm. and uh, gets onto us when uh, all of our kids don't uh, clean up after themselves like they should. <laughs> but uh, love her nonetheless. So she's going to be our special guest. She's going to walk out the tunnel with us uh, this week. And uh, you know we're uh, we're extremely excited to to have her part of our team. And uh, you know I I met with her yesterday and uh, talked to her about kind of about you know everything that we're going to be doing and everything and she's just so excited to to be a part of it and uh you know it's going to be a great night you know uh pink out's one of those things where uh it can be a commercial type thing or sure. it can be something special mm-hmm. and and i always think that you know as a head coach when you have the opportunity to make it something special and make it meaningful uh it's it's a it's a great thing to do because it's not just about being able to throw on some pink socks or put a sticker on the helmet and things like that. You know, all those things look cool and great and everything else. But uh, when you can truly honor somebody, uh, or you know, if there's a player in the locker room that has uh, a mom or an aunt or grandma uh, that's been through this, that's you know made it through on the other side, or you know maybe unfortunately didn't. Uh, yeah. This is a great time for for us, you know, to be there for them, and uh, and I think that's that's what's bigger than the game of football, and it's bigger than just wearing pink on a, a certain game or something like that. And so, uh, I always want to, you know, we'll be talking about that tomorrow uh, in our devotional. Uh, so, which is I'm super excited about our devotional tomorrow. Uh, we get Jenny Nedlin, uh our new superintendent's going to come in. Uh, she's a sports fanatic. Mm, uh, yes. She's going to come in and, and do our devotional, and so. Uh, she's uh she's excited about doing that and uh you know she's been a she's been a great supporter of athletics uh everywhere that she's been she's been a great supporter for us uh she's come in you know not just for athletics but but everything hippo nation and so really excited to uh to have her share to our athletes um uh, you know and then just getting out there and getting you know uh, I love playing at home. I love the atmosphere here. I mm-hmm. uh, love when the lights are flickering uh, and everything else. Sure. Um, you know, big shout out to the band. Uh, you know, I want to give them a shout out. They had a UIL competition uh, last night. Uh, they got all ones, and so they'll be heading on to the area competition. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Congratulations. So Absolutely. Yeah. So don't be mad at the band for leaving early uh, on Friday night. They, they're they in the Bands of America competition uh, in Waco, uh, so they have to be up here at 4 30 4 20 in the morning on saturday so the they're uh, they're skating out a little bit early but we got some recording so hopefully we still get the lights and and we'll we'll have the recording of the of the fight song in the second half hopefully ah, right on that gets played nice well uh, that's a great segue to uh, just uh, sony point coming up on friday uh tune tune district three three overall um just did you think this is where you'd be at this point and and if so what do you build on what are you looking forward to moving forward in the season you know, I mean, it's I this district's crazy. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, when you when you're in a district this big, you know, there was there was a huge upset with Vista Ridge uh beating uh, McNeil. Yeah. Uh McNeil's quarterback's been out. Uh that was the the big one on that. And so uh, that you know kind of threw a, a little wrinkle in the whole district. Uh so I didn't know exactly what to think. I just knew it was going to be, you know, a tough race all the way through. Uh you know, I still feel uh, you know, we're one of the better teams in the district. Mm-hmm. Um and I, and I believe that, and I believe we showed it. Uh, you know, we just got to we got to finish some games. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we got to finish some games uh, late, and uh, we're going to be right where we need to be. You know, we're sitting right now. We're sitting in fourth place uh, with the uh, with some big games coming up. You know, obviously Stony Point, which we got to take care of on Friday night, and then we have uh, uh, go to Vandergriff, uh, which they're sitting at the top of the district. Uh, you know, undefeated in that one. And then we have, uh, you know, the two big ones coming down the stretch, which will be just Ridge and McNeil. Yeah. Uh, those will be two two big games that will kind of determine, you know, where we sit uh, kind of in the mix. And if, you know, right now we still control our own fate. 
Sure. Uh, and I think that's the big thing in, in that and the big message for our kids is that, you know, when you control your own fate, then you're not you're not you're not relying on, oh man, if Round Rock is to beat so and so by thirteen points and Vista Ridge is to beat this person by twelve points and then maybe we have a chance to do this. You know, right. Yeah. You, you control your own fate, uh, and you go ahead and take care of your business, then that's what that's where you want to be. And uh that's where we're at right now, so uh, you know, I feel confident that we're going to be able to do that. And we're going to be able to put a great product on the field, and and our kids are still showing up and fighting, and uh, we're exactly where we need to be. Well, it's been a heck of a ride so far, and it's been a lot of fun. So congratulations for where you are, and best of luck for what's coming up next. In just a couple minutes, we will be through three of these with one more to go. So congratulations for enduring this as well. I appreciate, appreciate you it. being here with us. Of course, for the coaches. So that's going to do it for us. Episode number three in the books. Allow me to thank everyone with Huddle ISC Athletics, Brad LaPlante, and all the folks behind the scenes here, Coach Compton, of course. And thank you to all the coaches and players that have graciously given up their time to be interviewed and, and spend time with us in the Coaches Show. A huge shout-out to the folks at Bite Media, Mo Bertrand, Sierra Bankat, Christina Weber Bertrand, and, of course, the producer extraordinaire back there, Mr. Trey Grubb. Thank you, Trey, for being here with us this evening. Episode 3 in the books. Thank you all for tuning in to the Huddle Hippos Coaches Show. Michael Rose, Coach Compton, we'll see you next time.